Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. Last time we had a failure of our launch vehicle during liftoff in our attempt to make a successful crew orbit. Uh, in the interim, I upgraded a little, a few things on our KR-1 rocket, resulting in the KR-1B. Uh, it will be another 64 days before that is done and after Finishing our launch pad recondition, no surprise, because something there explodes every time we lift off. So that's, um, yeah, no shocker there. I have never been able to figure out what that is, but we'll go ahead and start to warp until our Zenith Blue 3 is complete. Uh, in other news, coming up here on our tech tree, we are about 30 days away from having, well, by the time this is done, we'll be 9 days away, or 20 days away, sorry, from having our improved electrics being done researched, which we will use to make improvements. Oh, crap. Well, there's absolutely nothing we can do about this. Uh, it would be nice to launch something towards Venus, but we don't have the technology, and we kind of proved that last time when I tried to shoot for it anyway and botched it pretty bad so we're gonna have to wait for that to be done later uh, next window looks like is the next chance we'll get to do anything flying past Venus let me take a look at our alarm clock uh, we can go ahead and delete that 250 days until our next Mars window we will be shooting for that one undoubtedly so Go ahead and pour through these last nine days. Uh, the improved electrics I'm kind of excited about. That's a extendable solar panels and I think some longer range antenna so that we can actually do something with these uh, transfer windows instead of just trying to use flight computer, which is terrible at things. All right. And we'll go ahead and roll that out. And warp to complete. RA 8D Ranger Mark 1. Oh, that was the one that we tried to send to Venus and failed miserably. I wonder what that SOI change is. Should we check on that? Yeah, we got a, a day or so to our rollout. Uh, RA 8D Ranger Mark 1. Oh, came out of the moon's sphere of influence and is now on a collision course to Earth. Well, that's fine. <laughs> Not like I liked that thing very much anyway. It's a decent communication satellite, so, but it's completely out of fuel. There's literally nothing we can do to stop that. All right, and our Zenith Blue, stop the SOR change, that's the same one. And when we get out on the pad, I'll be able to further explain some of the changes uh, we made to the KR-1. Uh, it was really just some engine upgrades, so I don't know why I'm telling you that. Um, let's go ahead and warp to the next morning to avoid a nighttime launch that nobody likes. Even with ambient light enhancement, they're really just not that much fun. Okay, we'll go for a nice dawn time launch. Yeah, sorry, Bill. That's not going to be you. Val's going to take it up again and hopefully not ruin it this time or something. Uh, this is the first flight of several new engines, so let's just uh, hope for the best, I suppose. Eek. <laughs> I know, I'm kind of setting myself up for failure again, I hope everything goes well. I hope we don't have any engine failures. I hope everything works the way it's supposed to, and I hope my bad piloting doesn't contribute to another absolutely uh, catastrophic uh, launch failure yet again, because this curse is getting a little old. <clears throat> a little swig of my now completely cold coffee. I do have all of those set up. All right, KR-1B. So you can see our engines are now prominently displayed instead of being sucked up into these uh, fairing tubes. Does they now carry a lot more fuel? These have been upgraded to the 
RD250, or maybe they are the 275s now. Yeah, but they're not the 275Ms. And it's the same for this interstage here, and everything from there up is the exact same. There were some changes to burn times, uh, resulting in some tweaking of fuel, but for the most part, it is the exact same, just a whole lot taller. And you can see very clearly our interstage is painted on what has fuel and what does not have fuel. So, we are going to go ahead and go with our ignition. Sequence start. For lift and lift off. Oh, and no explosions, nothing falling down the pad. That is absolutely brilliant. And these engines do produce, yeah, produce uh, quite a bit more thrust. And their ISP is actually a little higher at the sacrifice of burn time. They're down to 2 minutes and 9 seconds, down from 2 minutes and 30 seconds with their original version. So, uh, I think the overall was a loss of Delta V down to 1,500. 15,000 meters per second delta B to about 12,000 meters per second delta B. But for our goals of just getting something in orbit, that should still be well more than enough. So anyway, barring anything absolutely catastrophic happening, I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward to a lot of this launch stage. I will pick you guys up in orbit. All right, and that'll do it at 302 by 222 kilometers. That is an orbit, as is official. Now, Val is going to stay up here and do more than a few orbits. She's going to try to set some endurance kind of records. Crude altitude record of 200 kilometers. I guess we hadn't got that one yet. And vessel complete. Also, as a matter of first, Val is now going to be taking the world's first EVA in orbit. Clip clinging to the hatch, she'll take an EVA report and keep that experiment for the time being. As well as taking a completely independent spacewalk. Way to go, Val. <laughs> All right, and let's get you back inside. That was enough of an adventure for right now. Uh, I'm just excited that we made it here to orbit. Yay! Like I said, Val's going to come stay up here for a while and try to set some endurance records and see exactly how much life support this uh, capsule affords her before bringing it all back home for a parade, I could only assume, amongst a few other things. But uh, we'll get to all of that next time. So uh, until then, thanks for hanging out. Really appreciate it. I will see y'all later.